Hello, welcome back to Let's Play Secrets of Grindia, low percentage style. In which, we will do our best to avoid even more mobs on a side path. Except, now we don't have a choice but to deal with mobs on a side path. And of course, I miss because I'm terrible. Uh... Okay, that was, that was an error dodge. Darn it. That helps. Thank you very much. So I should probably take the time to... ...equip the magic weapon as opposed to the two-handed weapon. Because damage optimization is important. Except for when they decide to dodge to the side like that. Hey, level up! Now this first level is... I ought to deal with that audio. There we go, that's better. Now this level is important because now we get introduced to the need for gold skill points. Right, past level 5. The skill points require gold skill points in order to be able to upgrade it even further. So I'm not sure what else... I guess I could get Ice... Yeah, I'm gonna get Ice Nova just for crowd control. Here's how it works. So yeah, I don't know what else to say at this point. I mean, this isn't exactly what I'd call a let's play with aiming for high quality, just more a challenge. Rather than trying to be informative. But yeah, the Picos do have high defense which reduces my overall damage. That boss takes two tend to fly around and get annoying. There we go. Now we can actually progress, as opposed to being distracted on the side path by various mobs. And here we get some more story. Ah, like this would have gotten to them. Our obsession. Yeah, spooky, spooky time. And hey, what's this? Puzzles. Alright, so... This puzzle is actually fairly straightforward. All you have to do is just move various objects around. Basically create a set of mirrors so that you can get to the chest over there. Couldn't be easier. And the chest, a key that we can use on the door right here. Ah, oh, yeah, pots. I'm not allowed to break those, but I am allowed to collect money. Chests. And of course, we need another key from somewhere. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, 
Sounds like a potentially bad idea. Oh, jeez. Oh, well, thankfully we have to be immune to damage. And now I've glitched out an enemy. It's going to continue making that noise forever. Why are we talking about escape charts? Surely the... I actually know, considering that the phase man was crazy enough to attack us in the first place. And we have no association with Zamwimir. We don't we haven't even met Zamwimir. That's not good. Hey, more lore. Wait, on the Guardians? So, in other words, the Guardians arms man made? What? Well, we've only encountered one phase man. Maybe there's only one in existence. Ah yes, the analogy of the world burning around us while we continue living out our normal lives. Heavy force applied to the robot's head. Sounds like we have ourselves a way to defeat Gundam, if it ever comes to that. At least 10 years. It's been a lot longer than 10 years, going by all the growth of vegetation around it and all the collapsed structures, and the fact that the structure itself seems to be falling apart. Oh dear. That's not good. Anyway, moving on, we get the second key and can now progress through the It's still glitched out. I can't help it because low percentage. Hello, goodbye. I think I read this already. Yeah, I did. Oh dear, a completely non-optional side fight. Whatever shall I do? Sentry has no direct way to attack the player, other than through its minions. But even they can be quite dangerous. See? Me! <laughs> I don't know if the enemies around here drop experience. My assumption is no, but even so I'm going to avoid killing them unnecessarily. On the basis that it might grant me more experience, which is against low percentage, or at least the way I'm playing it. Of course, that right there was just the enemy getting in the way. Enemy missing spectacular. Oh great, now I have to kill the Guardian. Yeah, 
There we go. Getting in the road, enemies. This is a lot harder than it looks. Constant attacks do not help. Okay. It should. Oh, there we go. Apparently, I leveled up. Sure, why not? I just know it can always do with an additional upgrade. Oh, that's not good. I wonder what kind of amazing trap, I mean, treasure, lies beyond that door. Oh well, now's as good a time as any to find out. What ancient eldritch secrets will we uncover? Find out in approximately one minute. And of course, after of course, a lo loading screen and some more lore. That's no good. Hey! Looks like an ancient treasure. As well as something. Let's find out. Let's of course, disturb rule rules of dungeoneering. Well, that's not good. We can't afford to have that happen. First stop is to take out the giant hands by dealing enough damage to them. Staying in the center is generally a good idea. Of course, next time I plan on serving my energy points when I actually need to take out and do damage to the boss. Of course, I'm just gonna wait for energy to recover and then. All we have to do now is just. do that. This is going to take a while. Make sure you off gun them before it does its electrical discharge. Otherwise you will take damage from the electrical discharge. But of course you probably figured that out without me needing to tell you. Set it on fire. Jump off and now we get a new attack to add it to the point. Again, standing in the center is still a good best idea. Up to a point. Mm. Of course, getting hit is not a good idea. One more 
all these miniature stages to go. There is no real reason to move away from this position. Of course, having a shield up is just a safety measure to make sure we don't take any damage. Because of course, we've beaten the boss. Your limitless power while you are merely an amulet. Eh, uh, no. What? Because slave is only a slave in the first place. Yeah, so too am I. Too bad. Oh no, how could I possibly forget how to use the fast travel system? I mean, I only demonstrated it in the last episode. For that, we get lots of money, and can easily... Well, we have to use the fast travel to get back to Evergrind. Of course, as part of our getting back to Evergrind, I'm going to do some shopping. Namely... Form of getting s some stuff to enhance our survivability. And of course, improve our overall damage output. Uh oh. What? You're hardly nobility. Oh, and what's that? Uh oh. Well, that's not good. <laughs> I have no intention of allowing him to get away. After all, this is a mandatory main quest that gives me experience. And experience in low percentage is a valuable thing. And of course, Marino runs away very quickly. There's only really one way you can catch up to him, and that's with usage of the piercing dash skill. Mind you, mind you, even without the piercing dash skill, it's easy to keep a sight of him. Especially if you've played the game before and know exactly where he's going, or have paid attention. The societal orders. Oh yeah, it really depends on how much money you can throw at the lawyers. I do like his rapier. But you want to avoid getting hit by him, because if he hits you once, he'll combo you. Like that. Also, he makes slime noises for some reason.
But overall, this is an easy fight once you get into a rhythm. It's just merely getting him into that rhythm in the first place. And of course, it helps if you have damage over time applying. And of course, it also helps if you decide not to get hit. And there we go, we got the amulet back. Yeah, that sounds like as good an idea as any. We always got enough XP experience to level up. Of course, the trip back to Evergrind will heal us back to full health. Of course, if there was only health potions that we could purchase to help us in the more extended boss fights. Fortunately, due to the way the game is balanced, health potions are out of the question. Ah yes, there we go. And yep, this is our second time in the HQ, but I didn't introduce the HQ properly the first time. Over to the left, you get the Hall of Memories where you can fight previous boss fights. Although it's incomplete and some boss fights simply don't show up in the current build of the game. And to the right is the lab, where various things are studied, including science. Oh yes, in the bag, taking all the credits. Before condescending us again. Oh jeez. Exactly. through the proper channels. And who's this? Uh... Yeah, that's because that seems like a good idea. Quentin, didn't you complain earlier about not really being able to climb stairs? opening a door. That's what she's doing. Wait, you expected this? Sure, because nothing bad can happen when we disturb the guildmaster who normally does not like being disturbed. Uh, apparently. Oh jeez, and if you thought the bag was condescending, Master Ivy is even worse. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Who opposes him? Is it along the same lines as the one we just recovered from the Flying Temple? Of 
That's pretty good evidence. Uh, dwarves, maybe? Exactly, rare and valuable items. Wait, treasure? How can we possibly stand idly by and let the chance slip by us? Wow. That would be a pretty good analogy. <laughs> well, at least the bag doesn't laugh like that. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. Let's continue the conversation outside, in front of the guards. Make haste to not waste. Oh dear, that's not good. Oh well, we'll just have to take on this by ourselves. Uh, we kind of already have a sidekick. Wow! Oh jeez. Oh well. It's not entirely bad. Anyway. This is the end of this episode, see you in the next episode where we will commence tutorial 2.0.